Welcome to episode 11. I'm very, very excited about this one. This one's going to be titled The Truth About Getting Married Young. And as a wife who got married when I was 21, I brought on a special guest, Theo and Zarina. Right? I said that right? Okay. Uh, They got married at 19 just a month ago. And so... What's so fascinating to me about that is that we're living in a society and a culture, especially in the West, where they're promoting feminism, they're very anti-marriage, they're anti-even having children now, you know? So you got the red pill movement, you got just so much going on, so much chaos. And I think it's so rare nowadays to see people get married so young. So we're just going to talk about the truths of that and also why that's so beautiful. You know, I think even me getting married young at 21 years old. I'm so glad and so grateful I did. And right now you have like these phrases called like the whole phase. You have, you know, it's a lot yeah, going right. on, yeah. right? So I just think that you guys beat that. And that is something to celebrate. And I even talk about celebrating virginity. I talk about celebrating things that are now people mock and make yeah. fun of. So I think it's so important to actually bring on people that are very uh young and married and i know you guys have a lot of questions for me i have questions for you but we'll start off just introducing you guys so all right right. i'm theo um i am 20 years old i met serena when i was what 18 i think um and you know we met over instagram and everything like that so the story is um a couple years prior, I found her on Instagram, and it was more so like a building myself up. I didn't expect to have her as my wife right now, but, um, you know, through talking to her and um, having an opportunity and um, taking that chance to talk to her, now here we are. It took me a little bit um, at first, but she eventually um, started talking to me, and then we found that we had a connection especially on the levels of the most high as well. So that kind of joined us together like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what about you? Um, my name is Zarina. I'm 19. Um, we got married last month in July. Um, it's been great. Like, it's just been great. I have no complaints. Um, like you said, we met in 2020 or like the beginning of 2023 um we were long distance he was over here and I was in Jersey so you know it was long distance for a while um and something that kind of like kept it together or made it easier to get married young my parents also got married young like they were like 20 like 20 21 um so once they saw like his intention and everything from the jump, they were like on board. Right. Like they asked him so many questions. He wrote like a book back mm-hmm. to them, like, <laughs> everything. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it started. We were long distance. And then, you know, he would come and see me like every month, mm. like fly to see me from Texas three hours every single month, um, weekends at a time, like this weekend he's coming, the next weekend he's coming. So. That's amazing. Yeah. (laughs) And so you said 18. So you guys didn't know each other very long and got married. All right. So amazing. It was more so, I know there's a saying, when you know, you know. So it was true. Just growing up, I've always wanted to be married. So when I saw that she had everything I wanted, I had a list of, you know, 10 things. And, you know, over the course of meeting her and FaceTiming, she had all those 10 things. So I already knew that she was going to be my wife. Um, but, and that also changed my perspective on everything as well. Cause growing up in the past, I was pretty disobedient. I was, you know, committing a lot of sin. Um, so for her to just come into my life and then with her being a righteous woman and beautiful woman that she is, it's just, I love you know, that. <laughs> yeah. I so. grabbed some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, So getting into some questions, because I do want to keep introducing you guys a little bit more before you guys, you know, ask me questions Mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Um, What desired you both to get married, though? Because some people will argue, well, you could just have waited a couple more years. You don't really know yourself, um, so on and so forth. So what really was the big desire to get married right now? Um, For me, um, it was really like 
there's I feel like it was easier to grow with the person when you have the commitment because you know there's a thing of like dating this person and this person and this person and this person without commitment and it leads to more sin temptation lust everything right like everything that you don't really want um So for us, and we got that question a lot, like when we were engaged and even after getting married, why do it so young and why do it so quick? It's really when you know, you know, and when the Most High puts that person that checks off every single box and brings you closer to him, right? then you have no other questions. And then if problems come up, you have someone to work with and, you know, solve the problem with instead of doing it for yourself. So. I've like since being married, you know, my life has changed in the best way and it's been great. Like I said, like I have no complaints and, you know, people looking at the outside, they will think like, oh, you know, wait till you're 30, you know, have fun. But I can have fun with my person and have that commitment still be in a great relationship under the most high. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's beautiful. What about you? And for me, it was, um, you know, growing up, I saw certain people in my family is always more so divorce um, and more so people waited till their 30s because they wanted to get their career out the way first. But even me and it's, you know, when I tell people this, sometimes it's unbelievable. Um, From the age of like three to five, I've always wanted a wife and children from Young age, whenever my teachers would ask what we wanted in life, it was always wife and kids. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just more so I was always seeking that type of love. And that way I can grow a righteous household. That way I could be, you know, not continue some of the stuff that happened in the generations before me, but continue something new that's on the path of the most high. So that's the that's where I was with it. That's amazing. I also. As a as a Christian, as a believer, I've really just dabbled with the science of things too, because with some people they don't hear sin. But I was dabbling with the fact that just to add on mm-hmm. to what you were saying, with the more body counts, the more relationships that you have, the more you are struggling to connect long term with the person you do marry and you have more traumas now, you have more insecurities, you have comparisons and there's just so much that goes on in the mind when you have gone through phases of getting into relationship after relationship and you're older. And not only that, right, but when you, I was just talking to my mom on the way here about this whole conversation, but when you get married, when you're like in your late 20s now, you feel like you know yourself and it's harder to submit and grow with the person, right? Because Mm -hmm. when you come into a marriage, your man is supposed to really lead you and you guys uh, form as one. But when you have already really molded your own identity, it gets much harder to do so and to follow. It's like, uh-uh, I'm not doing that because I've been through X, Y, Z before. Uh-uh. And it's like, oh, gosh, woman, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, or vice versa. But yeah, especially with uh, amongst women. So I do talk yeah. about this. Um, so thank you guys for answering that. I do want to ask what lies do you guys hear in society right now about getting married young? Like what has been told to you? Um, a lot of it is like you were saying, you don't know yourself, you don't know what you want yet, or, you know, relationships don't last, get lawyers for a divorce or whatever, always be ready for a divorce. Yeah. Um, and, um, what's another one? You know, growing more so, more marriages grow separate. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's just some of them I've heard okay. that are, came to mind. Really the same thing. Like, you don't know yourself. You're not ready. And then they bring up, like, every scenario that could go bad yeah. with the marriage. Like, oh, he could do this to you. He can kidnap you. Like, it's, right. I've heard it all. <laughs> so, you know, those are the things that people just have in their mind that they don't like encourage marriage in general but even being married young because it's more of like have fun do what you want and then wait for like 40 to be committed 
to someone. Yeah, no, definitely. I hear that all the time, too. And as someone who was, uh, I got married at 21, and I'm going to be 26, so it's been about four, five years now, and it was definitely a great decision. I'm so glad. It stopped me from a lot of uh, destruction. I was able to grow. I was able to learn a lot off of my husband, and obviously, you probably know my testimony. We did go through a lot of conflict when I was 21, but that was due to the lifestyle I was living prior. So I do think the younger you get and you haven't gotten into those ways, um, the easier it is to come in as one too so i love that um and then last question is what are some conflicts you guys faced while being married young i think so far, the, it's been a month <laughs> but <laughs> yeah well i would say even though we've been married a month um coming from my background i grew up as a you know very heavy in the word in the torah and the laws and everything like that so me and her, it was similar, but there were certain things that she still did that I didn't do. So I didn't know how to communicate on, you know, how that was wrong. And show, I was showing her how it was wrong uh, with scripture, but I didn't know how to communicate it properly because I would get frustrated because she wasn't getting it right away. Mm. And that's just simply because that's what she grew up with. The older you get in certain things, the harder it is to let it go. And that's what I learned. So that's probably the biggest that's probably the biggest conflict that we've had um being together. Uh just the change and the maturity in the most high mm. and letting go things. Right, that, right, right. That's know. why it's so important that you teach your kids and bring them up bring them up the right way because right. once it's sealed in their minds, it's sealed and she you kind of she kind of told me yeah. a little bit I think <laughs> yeah. we're going to get into it what she was talking about so we'll get into that but what about you? Yeah, basically um, the same thing like we were discussing before. Um, like I said, like, you know, I've been a believer since I was young, like since I was born. Um, but I think it was like more of an advancement when I met him because, like I said, he looks into everything. Like we learn, like he learned like Hebrew when he was younger. Like he learned like the origin of like different things, like holidays and everything. So that was something that, you know, I never did growing up. Um, I knew about certain things, but it was like, okay, like, okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> so so um, meeting him, it was just a change because, you know, when, you know, before um, meeting him, you know, or moving here, I was under my parents' leadership because that was still my head at the time, my dad. Um, so it was kind of like, I was in the middle because I was engaged and I was still under his headship and moving mm -hmm. under his headset headship. So that like change or transition process would probably be like the hardest thing. Um, but overall, I, I don't think it was that that difficult because it just really took me to like, OK, what am I really able to give up for the most high and not just do it for him because he wanted me to or this is how he um, lived? But doing it for me because I wanted to give this up or not or not even give it up, but learn more about it and, you know, be able to die to myself so the most high can be greater than me. Right. So. That was beautifully broken down, by the way. So, uh, OK, you guys have some questions for me. So can't wait to answer them. <laughs> um, The first one is what is the most change you had to endure when entering a face-centered marriage. Ooh, yeah, because mine was a little tough, right? I came from a single mother household. There was a lot of witchcraft. I didn't even know it was witchcraft that I was practicing and idolatry I had. So that was a huge shift for me. I think one was I believed in God, I just didn't know how in depth it, it went, right? And so what actually happened was the first three months of my marriage, because my my husband would be driving, we'd be driving and he would see like Santa Claus up and he'd be like, oh, the demon, right? Like, what are you talking about? Why is everything so demonic to you, right? And so I'm like, I love Christmas. What are you talking about? And so what I did was instead of just like reading my Bible, I actually learned about how dark the world is first before I started reading my word because I read my bible for the first time actually when I was with my husband and so 
I studied on like demonology. I studied on symbolism. I studied on uh, what these like celebrities are doing and all of this other stuff. And when I saw how dark it got, that's when I realized, whoa, the world really is so sick and Satan's really moving and how deceptive it goes is crazy. And that was what really brought me to my faith where like, whoa, now I want to be covered. Because mm-hmm. I didn't even know it was there. And that's how blind I was. And so I have a lot of uh, sympathy for people who are really blind right now. And like, oh, that's there's nothing wrong with that. There's not gonna, and It is. But I get it. I once thought the same way, too. I was like, why do Christians always got to call things demonic? When you realize how deep things go, mm-hmm. it's like, whoa. Like, So one was coming to that reality. Two, I would say now... <clears throat> I had to purge out all of these entities that I opened up and let inside of me. That was scary. So in my marriage, there's like, it was like there was all these doormat demons that I never knew were there. And so since I was with my husband, whoo, they would like provoke them and I would like lash out or I'll say something. I'm like, I don't even know where that came from. And to really come to understand that uh, when you are indulging in sin at a young age or you're just indulging in sin, you're letting all these things inside of you and it's going to take a exorcism to let it out. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Jada. Um, So when I look back, I'm like, golly girl, there's so many things I wish you were just stop didn't do and it could be like the spirit of pride the spirit of ego um the jezebel spirit and so forth and so on so that was another hard one for me was just having to like face all of that and and purge it out in different ways changing my diet stop listening to certain music i mean there's so many ways to purge this stuff out Mm -hmm. really have to take in criticism like tough like you have to be told about yourself and that was hard too like you have to be told that is wrong what you're doing the way you're thinking is wrong and be reconditioned over and over and over again to think the right way Mm -hmm. because i grew up thinking completely a different way so I can keep so on so forth, but that is the hardest thing was the purging and the um, coming to face how real this stuff is um, when I was so blind before. But yeah, that's my answer. Any comments with that? <laughs> no, not really. Um, well, I do have one question. So was your husband always the more, um, like, how do I put it? Was he always to where... He had that understanding of certain evil things or did he kind of come into that when he got when he was with you when y'all first met? Well, that's a great question because I think both of us got this huge reality check. He grew up in the church, Mm. so he'd seen people a certain way. He never knew about mental illness. He never knew about schizophrenia. He never knew. He never seen someone live in in it just dealing with so much internally and seeing it like purge out, seeing all of that, he was like, what the heck is going on? You know, right. like I don't, I'd never seen that or how combative I was. I was very combative. I, I always argued everything and that was okay because he said, you know what? I don't want you to follow blindly. I'm telling you what it is. Go and learn. And I actually loved that. Right. When he said, I don't want you to follow blindly. I'm just telling you this. Go and look everything up for yourself. And then I would, I would, cause I wanted to refute him. Right. I wanted to challenge him and be like, you're wrong. I know what I'm talking about. And so I'd go and be like, OK, I'm wrong. <laughs> I actually dove far deeper than what she even said to me. I feel re- realized how dark this goes. So that kind of if that kind of answers your question of like, um, no, he 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 didn't. He knew in in a way, but he really has learned. And not only that, but kind of. He was the one who carried the marriage and then some way, somehow things kind of turned where now he's like dealing with himself. And we came to this understanding as a married couple is that one person is going to be carrying the weight and then it's going to switch. So always be ready to do so because then he was struggling with certain things and I had done my research and I've learned a lot and God has really evolved me to understand. And so I was able to be patient with him through a time where he was learning how to become a certain person a certain person and it was beautiful that dynamic is beautiful Mm -hmm. so and just uh just to add to that too i actually told my husband this one time it it seems like in a marriage someone's always either the pharisee or jesus so someone's either getting put up on the cross Mm -hmm. and dying for the their spouse they're the person that they love or there's someone who after the death process they come to this humbling of wow you did that for me i'm so humbled right so 
and it always switches like that. So my husband really got put up on a cross and was butchered in the beginning of our marriage. I'll tell you that. He was like, gosh, I feel like I'm dying to myself right now. And then things switched later where I was like, wow, like I'm so humbled. Like you did that for me. I'm going to do that for you because I see us in a season where I have to get put up on a cross, but I will happily do so for you. And that's the beauty of marriage. And so when people do not understand that it's constant dying to yourself, they just give up when you're getting butchered but that's the love it's like the crucifixion uh crucifixion oh that's a big word crucifixion (laughs) whatever uh so yeah just to get into all of that so any other questions that was a long answer but (laughs) do you have any more um i have one like more so for you know your husband i know he's not here but my question was what was the hardest sacrifice that he had to make whenever he became a husband if i don't know if um Zarina had told you those answers because I I, um, I was writing them up, but I was just thinking about that because I remember when I became a husband, I didn't realize how much sacrifice, you know, it took and how much dying to self uh, that I really had to do. <laughs> dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so especially with the patience, you know, patience, I was very, I realized how very impatient I was. So I just wanted to no, like how did he handle the change of becoming a husband? Wow, I would say that he really listened to a lot of strong men um, on podcast now. That's something that he does do. He listens to a lot of just male leaders. And he had to really study and understand the mind of a woman and her, hom- her hormones. Ugh. And how those are beneficial to nurturing a child, but sometimes they come into conflict with you, right? And our emotions could be our very the the thing that destroys our own house, and the thing that's actually destroying us. And that's why we need a man. We need your guys's like logical sense and reasoning. What you're like looking at her like, <laughs> why are you doing this? Like, what is that? But there's a, it's beautiful that she thinks that way in in a sense, and so that's why she needs that. Uh, male guidance and something I've learned is just like the the nurturing and the love of a woman and her emotions to feel and be able to communicate and read between the lines is beautiful for children because they can't communicate right and that's something I just learned but I was learning prior but what happens is in in the marriage is that she now can be moving and acting off of feelings and not what she really means or now she doesn't know how to communicate it's just all these emotions and I don't know what to do with them and like I'm now reading between the lines maybe I shouldn't like I'm feeling like your energy's a little off right and you're like girl calm down right but that's where your male leadership comes in and so just to go back on to things that my husband had to sacrifice, one, he kind of had to learn uh, women and kind of study that and have a lot more sympathy and patience for, okay, you are like this. I, I can't make you more like a man, but I can help guide and lead you and you learn to submit to my guidance and leadership. When I tell you this, trust me enough that at this point, because you're not following blindly anymore, you know me. Right. So at this point, when I say, okay, this is what it is, or we're not even going to entertain this or these emotions that came from a whole nother place girl like you got to leave that over there okay you got to go talk to your friends about that one because i don't know what else to tell you uh sometimes i have to be okay with that of like okay i might be just like very hormonal and doing too much right now so i'm gonna follow what he says so that's something you guys will learn to trust each other with over time right to learning about being a man yeah it's very self-sacrificing i think there was a lot of desires and wants that he had And he had to realize that when it comes to being a husband and a father, that has to be put on the back burner. And I think that's a grievance that you kind of have to come to. And I'm not saying that that's something that can't come into play later, but your wife and your children have to definitely be number one priority. So I think he always has to put me first and not my emotions and my feelings. I think that is something that could get misconstrued because I could be like, I'm not happy because this is that. And he's over here playing to that. No, where is he leading me? Where is he guiding me? Am I on the right path towards heaven? Is our children on the right path? He's always got to make sure he's pouring into himself enough yeah. so he can pour into his wife and kids. Right. Um, and that's your God-given duty so it's not even something you might want to do you have to just like some women don't want to have children 
I could not have kids. I like my body. And like, <laughs> I watched my sister just give birth to a baby and she was crying because she <laughs> swole up. Or she couldn't fit her sandals. Um, and I was looking at that like, oh, that's a little brutal. I don't want to do that, you know. But it's my God-given duty, right? Especially in this t- time in the society, you see so many uh, men and women who are so corrupted and their minds are being perverted and then they're having children. So it's our duty to actually kind of have children and to try to balance the world and spread out these soldiers right. to continue on doing God's work. So whether I want to or not, that's my duty. So that's your duty. And I think my husband had to come to that. And there's such a beautiful design in that being your duty like, it's so beautiful i think just to have more joy and then that 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 was given to you because you weren't born a woman you're born a man and this is why i hate seeing like men try to transition to women right it's because why would you give that up why would you give up your position where you're like the soldier right now and then you have the follower or the weak weaker vessel and there's such a beautiful and strength in that right Without us, you can't be as great as you are and vice versa. So, but you're a man. Like God put you here first. It's your garden. Adam was in the garden first and made the help mate for him. That is like such a strong role. So find beauty in that being given to you, you know, and your wife and children have to follow you. You know what I'm saying? And your law and your household. And it's a heavy role and it can be a burden, but it's such an important one. So right. that's what I have to say with that. It's a long explanation, but for the youth and the people, yeah. right? right? You got to right, give right. it. <laughs> right. So I know that you had another question for me or just a little bit, but I do want to hear. I know you said a question, but I do want to hear the backstory of the question, though, too, um, for the people about the holidays. Oh, so I the question that I had for you was how... Do you go about... My bad. I'm oh. sorry, real quick. Any comments to that? Oh, no, 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 no. I was, that was a lot. No, I no, no. didn't even give you a good. chance to say anything. No, that's all good. <laughs> that was perfect explanation. Okay, yeah. cool. It's a lot of dying to self. Like, that's what I was saying yeah, on that. A it's lot. a lot of dying to self on both parties. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, there's things that the man doesn't want to do and there's things that the woman doesn't want to do. But when you guys both are willing to sacrifice for each other, you guys come together bigger and better because you guys are in the roles and working together in the roles mm-hmm. him like leading and me submitting and helping him just like we we're created to do being help you know he can think logically and he can think bigger and have the vision and then i'm here to help bring the vision to life you know right. so it all works together yeah so that's mm-hmm. what i'll say yeah. he's the seed you're the soil all right beautiful <laughs> that's how it waters and grows mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay go ahead <laughs> So the question that I had was, um, what was kind of like the process of um, starting like your own traditions, um, like aside from like your family and friends? Like you grew up a certain way, but how did you like separate yourself from the things that you learned that wasn't right or anything? Like how did you kind of separate yourself or you and your husband separate yourselves from that Mm -hmm. specific, specific thing, but not like your family and friends? Mm, okay, so I know we kind of got into a little bit before this episode about holidays, and that was one of the biggest struggles for me. And my family still to this day, they love their holidays, and I'll be giving them faces like, mm. mm-hmm. you know, they've been laughing at me, and they love it. They love that I'm so passionate about it. But um, once again, this comes into wisdom. Uh, I know in Proverbs, I'm paraphrasing, but it, it kind of just talks about how. Like wisdom will basically save you from uh, from a lot of this. So the more you want to learn and know God's word and his truth, the easier things get. So when it came to that, again, when me and my husband first got married, he didn't celebrate holidays and holidays were big in our family and they love them. But I have learned that it is idolatry. Every, anything that you are struggling to let go of is honestly a problem. Like anything that you just like are refusing to learn about and you hear the negatives, but you're refusing to even learn about them. That's an issue. Right. So even when it comes to my husband's, my husband is overboard, though. He won't even do like birthdays. Like He's like, I don't want to do the birthday thing. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, can we can please keep that one, please? <laughs> But I've learned I've learned a lot. Like there's a lot of different studies into this. I, I I've watched something. I don't know how real it is, but uh, the more if you celebrate birthdays and you make it a ritual every year, your cells start to die faster and quicker because they're 
you know, going and relating to the brain. So there's a lot of studies to that. So then I'm like, oh, I kind of want to celebrate birthdays because I want to stay young and youthful longer, <laughs> right? So there's a lot that could go into it. But the more you study on these things, um, the easier it gets. So my husband in his household, he didn't want to celebrate holidays. And he had learned about their roots and that they're pagan, which just means that people worship these things and idolized yeah. these things and when you fall in love with studying and following your man and what he believes is his true when you fall in love with like learning from him it can actually be quite fun so i actually dove so much deeper than him when he told me about this because again i once i wanted to refute him i want to be like oh i'm gonna argue this right atheist mindset um i'm gonna argue you and then i fell so much deeper than him that i came back and was like let me school you on some stuff okay so <laughs> the tree right when you get down on your knees and you put the gift under and you receive the gift this is an act of this is where i receive mm -hmm my gifts this is wild man so now i'm like i hate the tree anybody bring me a present <laughs> from the tree like you know so and, and you're just fall, falling in love with like learning and it says to like god's people be set apart from the world and mm -hmm. so they look at us like crazy and some people might look at you even in your own family there's a lot of christians that are going to be before god and god's going to say i never knew you mm -hmm. right? right and i think that a lot of christians don't understand that part right they're doing whatever they want to do another christian like me can come up to them and say hey do you know these are pagan this isn't jesus birthday and they're like i don't want to hear about that well just know that like somebody and maybe not just me but multiple people try to come up to you and tell you this and gave you a warning but you continue to do so anyways mm -hmm. but you claimed you were a christian you claimed you followed god but you didn't you followed the ways of the world but yet you put god and some scriptures up in your bio yeah. and said cool that's it and so when you're standing before god and he says i've sent multiple people to try to teach you my truth and you refuted it you wanted to do your way um they're gonna have to face that and so i think it's beautiful and find beauty I know that we've grown up a certain way, but find beauty that your man has actually done the research mm -hmm. and he's like, I'm leading you the right way because he could be like, oh, no, I'm for Christmas and you could be the one receiving this and he doesn't want to do it. Thank God you have a man that's the opposite, right? You could be the teacher of your household right. and be drained, right? Like, why are you so, why are you the non-believer? I want you to guide me and teach mm -hmm. me. So I guess just find joy in that and find joy in being set set apart. Sometimes I find too much joy in it where I'm with my family. I'm like, mm, I, <laughs> I don't so bad at Christmas stuff, y'all, but, you know, and I shouldn't do that. But, um. I find joy in it that I broke free from traditions and they're still so deep into the idolatry of it. They're so deep into that like, they won't let it go, even though they know in their hearts and their spirits it's wrong. So thank God you've broken free from that. Thank God he's broken free from that. You know what I'm saying? And that's just one thing. There's many, many things, right? But um, I talk to, you know, people who are believers and they're struggling with porn and stuff like that. And then I struggle with ones that no, don't struggle with that. And I'm like, thank God that's not a problem in your household. So always just look at what's not the problem in your household instead of like, dang, that's so different than the way I grew up. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so that just answers once again, long <laughs> version of that. <laughs> We're kind of doing like a, a, a educating uh, session, <laughs> right? right? So I'm going to bounce off real quick. And mm -hmm. any comments to that, though, first um, before? I'll say like, I totally agree. Um, and it is good that you know, I have like somebody that was in it before me so I can, you know, kind of focus on learning instead of leading. Um, so it makes it very, very easy, like very easy, more easier than it would have been if it was the opposite way. Um, and also it shows like proof of when people say like they follow Christ and, you know, are believers, you know, your actions are going to align with what you're saying. Yeah. So, you know, if you like really follow him you should want to like strive for the truth and follow the truth right. instead of kind of just going because of what everybody else says yeah. it is um and like even like growing up in church from before and everything like that there was some things that i learned but coming out of it um you know i like researched the things that i was hearing and i'm like uh. you know there were some things that are like oh, i don't know like that's kind of different from what I'm reading in scripture. Right. So, you know, it's when you're coming out of like tradition or what you see the world doing, you really, your eyes are really open. Like the most high really removes the 
blindness from your eyes to really see the truth in scripture and go off of that instead of going off the world. Amen. Right. Amen. That was great. Any other comments too? Well, yeah. And that also, you know, got me to realize, I remember when we first, when I first proposed, I did have a ring. Um, and before then, I feel like the most I was putting on my heart to look into it because I heard some things about it, but I just didn't want to. Um, I gave her the ring. And then a couple months later, the most I put it on my heart again. So it was like, ah, now I got to tell her because I looked up the ring and I found that it had um, pagan origins from Egypt. And um, then the Greeks adopted it to into the tradition where it is now, where, you know, you put it on the finger um, as a fiance and everything like that. Yeah. But I told her and then I told her, well, you can just keep wearing it. You know, we already know the information. But then a couple months later, I, love I it. just told her to take it off because it just, you know, the pagan origins, I had to explain to her at, at a point. Um, and also I came to understand as well that you can't change something that has a pagan origin, a wicked origin into something that's righteous because if it was meant to be unrighteous and not please the most high, then it's going to forever be wicked and not please the most high. So even stuff as simple as, you know, a wedding ring or anything like that um, with the pagan origins, that's just seeing how the devil has tricked us into um, going into traditions of men just because we've heard it or we're used to it. So mm -hmm. that was just something that I praised the most high for bringing me out of as well. And it was rough, yeah. you know. But that probably was hard. It was hard, especially like ready having it and then having to take it off because yeah. it's something like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm fiance. Yeah. You know? Even though I was still fiance, but it was like, right. It felt, <laughs> you know, it yeah, felt, it felt different. Yeah. <laughs> but I think even that, it kind of put me in the mindset of, you know, I can give up anything for the most high because my life is not my own, but it's for him. And, you know, I constantly strive, even on social media, I strive to represent, you know, him before I'm representing myself, you know, representing um, our savior and representing, you know, my husband as well. Mm -hmm. um, but really learning to die to myself, like I said, so, you know, our savior can be glorified in whatever right. we're doing. So. Right. Amen. Just a quick story to to add to the ring thing, right? Is it one thing it can be to very fast is idolatry. And what's actually funny is my sister bought me this ring. This mm -hmm. isn't my real wedding ring. Mm -hmm. She was like, why do you keep going on these interviews and stuff and not wearing a ring? <laughs> like, you know, she she wants me to, you know, have it. And people are always, especially doing this now, people are always like, where's your wedding ring? But I didn't wear it for three years of my marriage. The first year I wore it, lost it three times, had a panic attack. The oh. thing cost thousands of dollars. And I would wear it and I realized I was only wearing it to try to symbolize my marriage, but my marriage was going through so much. And I said, that's what symbolizes marriage. It's like us building and growing together and coming united. And that is the biggest symbol of us to have a, a testimony to share with others and uh, than, than a ring. And I've actually counseled women who uh, got into the biggest fights with their husband over not wearing their wedding ring. You would be surprised how frequent that is. Or um, them losing their ring and bawling and, you know, being so distraught. And it's just, it's just a, it's just an idol. It's mm -hmm. once again, another idol. And it's another thing that God, uh, I mean, the enemy can use to, uh, implement fights into your marriage and so forth, so on. So any type of idol, if you're struggling to like let it go, if you're if you're seeing problems arise, and you probably should let it go, like you probably should. Yeah. So just a funny thing to say because I'm wearing <laughs> one, but it's not going to be the real thing. Right, right, right. That thing, the, the, that thing put me through anxiety and hell. I'm not going <laughs> to uh, <laughs> go around wearing it. So am I just to. I know that you guys have questions for me, but I want to, you know, ask you guys questions too. What advice do you have for this young generation? What I would say for any young men, stop, um, stop, you know, being a whoremonger, you know, basically what that is, is the biblical definition of, you know, what they call man whore, just going around, inserting yourself in all these different women, um, Present yourself before the Most High. Work on getting closer to the Most High. Work on trying to uh, please Him, and that will ultimately change um, 
how you are as a man, and it will also change the type of women that are brought to you. Because if you are a whoremonger, you'll only attract, you know, what you burn, what you, you know, go after. But if you present yourself before the Most High as a righteous man, then you will, um, you know, eventually uh, see a righteous woman after you've repented and prayed and fasted and you know put in the work for the Most High. He will um, give you. The desires of your heart and also with the desires of your heart, he changes your desire to good things, to righteous things. So that's what I would do. Just work on pleasing the most high and also, you know, watch what you listen to. Uh, leave all the gangster music alone and everything because that kills your brain. Um, listen to things that are filled with love, filled with motivation, you know, and I would definitely say as a man, um, as a young man, definitely. Um, try to have a goal that you can beat. I set a goal for yourself every couple months or so and try to beat that goal um, and you'll be fine. But make sure that you have the most high within yourself at all times. So that's good. Yeah. What about you? Um, I would say because um, I think oftentimes we hear or we think like women think submission is bad, a right. bad thing. Like yes. oftentimes, like it's like, why would I submit to a man? That's I can do everything myself. Submission is not a bad thing. I don't know who kind of started that saying like submission is a bad thing, because when you have someone who is leading you and providing for you, protecting you, you almost don't have to think about like for yourself sometimes because he's thinking for you or thinking about you. He's providing for you. He's protecting you, you know. You know, that's what I'm saying, like the importance of like working together, because if you have a provider, a protector, spiritually, like everything and you're doing what you're supposed to do, helping, it just makes everything work together. So submission is not a bad thing. Helping is not a bad thing. Having someone to lead you in the right direction and provide for you isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I would like definitely say to other people that want to get married young or people that are already married, like, that are older than me, you know, submission is not a bad thing. You can be dependent on somebody else and have a partner that you guys are both working together yeah. to make your marriage happy and, you know, make each other happy. I think the main thing should be to make the most high happy, of course, and make your partner happy, you know, help him and help me, like, you know, work together so it works. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And feminism is just a, just to share with you is like feminism definitely was, I think, a tactic of the enemy for sure, because I grew up like kind of feminist and I didn't even know what it was. But I came to this knowledge that men and women are the same. And so it was hard for me and why I wouldn't submit is because I didn't believe in there should be a leader or dominant role and then the other person follows like I was like we should take turns like that's what I thought this I, th I want a partnership you know and I got to get better at not saying a partner because you're more stepping into different roles mm -hmm. but yeah feminism definitely did a number on women right now so there is there is that and that's why I actively use this platform to talk against it because there is so much beauty in submission and one of my videos went viral of me talking about it it's like I realize we're we're one. And so me also when it comes to submission also is that I should look at him like I look at myself. When he's down, I should do everything in my power to help pick him up. I should even change me completely if I need to. Completely. Everything I'm thinking, everything I'm doing, I should com completely switch it up if I need to. You know, if he needs me to be a whole different person this season, I will become it. You know, if he needs me to gain more knowledge in this season because he's lost himself, I should do it. Um, that's a mission. And then your partner will always evolve into the, his best self. He's always his best self. You're always your best self. You know right. what I'm saying? And so it's uh, beautiful and pouring. But then I don't understand why people get into a marriage and they just expect that with barely minimal work, they're supposed to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like you're supposed to anything that is rewarding took a lot of work. That's the reward of it. Right. If you just have a race where you're 
obviously gonna be faster going against a bunch of slow people and i'm gonna win there's no reward Mm -hmm. it was already like i don't understand that but to fight for that end goal and you went up against a lot of good people and you win that's the reward of how tough it was how much i had to evolve how much i had to train how much i had to put into this and and for me to reach the finished goal which is really just we're married and we're happy and we did it and we conquered through all the challenges that is what's beautiful i don't understand why we're not understanding what marriage is supposed to be for Mm -hmm. um I want to add some controversial stuff see your guys' opinions I'm going to throw some shots at you guys what do you guys think about people who aren't Christians getting married atheists okay well poly poly too shoot we're going to throw some crazy (laughs) stuff in there go ahead sorry (laughs) what what I say is um without the most high you're not going to have a good relationship either way so being an atheist, if you're an atheist getting married, you have no foundation that you're married on. Um, and already without the most high, you already don't have stability. You're already unstable. So you may not think you're unstable, but you are unstable because your spirit's not where it's supposed to be. You're not happy. Or you may be happy for a time, think you're happy for a time, and then it fluctuates on and off and off. Mm-hmm. So being an atheist, being married, without having the most high in the center of your marriage, or any type of um, um, unrighteous marriage at all, without having the most high, you will never um, be able to fulfill your role properly and you'll never have that satisfaction that the most high wants us to have in a marriage. So that's what I would say about that. I would say the same thing. I think that there's so much, like biblically we can see like there's so much benefits of being married um, and having like a righteous marriage following his plan and purpose and his roles for each person so if you kind of go outside of that you're not you know the 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 foundation is kind of going to be messed up from the jump and you're not going to get all the benefits the the happiness you feel from having the most high as the lead right and you know how the order is you know the most high and no yeah the most high the husband wife and the children Right, right. That's how the umbrella, the triangle kind of works. So if you don't have that foundation already, it kind of just messes up the function of how it's supposed to go. Right. And you're not going to get or feel the happiness, the love that the most high gives your partner to share with you. Right. So I also I also tell people to uh, just to piggyback off of you guys is that we are a species that uh, I heard this quote of we are a species that always is looking for something to idolize, right? Mm-hmm. Because we are a species that is made to worship something. So if you do not have God, you're going to find something to idolize. That's why you see uh, uh, astrology is becoming a very yeah. big thing. It's becoming everybody's religion and they're blindly uh, following it without understanding what's actually going on. And I don't know if you guys read Revelations, but it talks about there's going to be a one world religion. Mm-hmm. And I heard someone say that they think it's going to be astrology. Because mm. everybody, even Christians, are following astrology. Yeah. It's it's a big one right now. And, uh, so with that being said, is that if you do not have God, you're going to accidentally or unintentionally end up idolizing your partner, mm-hmm. idolizing them to be able to fix you, make you happy, um, bring you peace, clarity, all of these things, which this is why it's supposed to be a three-party marriage with God uh, first and foremost, because when I was doing that with my husband where I was idolizing him, which anybody can mistakenly do. You get married, you're all happy, you got the butterflies, you're like, yeah, you're gonna make me happy, I'm so in love. And then when you hit the lows where you're like, I don't love you at all anymore. <laughs> I don't even like you. Um, <laughs> but uh, you, that, this is why God has to be first and foremost because he's who's pouring into you, you know what I mean? He, he is supposed to um, bring you and fulfill you with all of these things and then your partner is just is supposed to add on top of that. and um, and so, yeah, just to piggyback off of what you guys were saying, is that something I tell people all the time when I'm even coaching or counseling people is like, you got to stop idolizing them. You need to have a foundation. Yeah. Um, and you need to definitely have your foundation on God because the Bible is filled with everything you need. Right. And it's crazy because a lot of people that are not Christians or stuff, I don't know if you guys see this, but I watch podcasts where it's like someone who's not a Christian or just video clips with someone who's not a Christian and is an atheist, but they're basically saying what the bible has already said right i'm like <laughs> yeah. if you just read the bible 
And everybody's like, oh my gosh, gems, what? This right. is so good. You're so intelligent. Oh yeah, you would be just as intelligent if you read the Bible. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it's filled with wisdom and and you don't even need a college education. You just, mm-hmm. if you know the word and you follow that and you, you know, get into studying on some other things, but, you know, more biblical truth, you'll be probably one of the wisest people walking around, which is crazy. So yeah, just to add to all of that, um, we have about like 15, 20 more minutes. So is there anything else you guys want to talk about or add? Any questions, stories, crazy experience, um, more something to drop for the youth that are watching this right now who want to be married? Oh, well, I could say something about that. Like, mm-hmm. wanting to be married, me coming into it, of course, you see, you know, two people together, see the happy side. But um, getting more depth of the dying to self part, especially as a husband, Going back off of what you said earlier about, you know, sometimes I think your hu- you were saying that your husband um, had to give up some of his dreams and passions as well. Growing up, I also had very big aspirations. I've always been a big dreamer. I've always I wanted a car company growing up. You know, I'm very into cars and everything like that. And I work with cars. So when I met Zarina, I put that on the back burner. But it wasn't really a... Um, a burden for me to do that because I already knew that I have to lead my wife and that's just what I wanted. I was, I'm just happy to be able to, you know, be able to experience marriage so young, especially. But I remember talking with Zarina and she was telling me, you know, you can still do that. But I was explaining to her how, um, at that time I didn't think that I could because of, um, I felt like that would become an idol and I would put that above my wife because there's so much work that has to be put into things like that. And it's not to say that it can't be done, but, you know, just seeing that and, you know, being in the moment of having a spouse, having my wife, um, things like that aren't as important um, to me as they used to be because now I have a bigger priority. You know, a woman that I'm leading, um, and I always put it in perspective as well. If I know that the Bible says, if you lead a child astray, it's better for you to have a, I think it was a rock and a chain tied to your neck and thrown off a cliff. Mm. Um, so if I'm seeing that for a child, then I know being a husband is supposed to lead my wife. How worse would it be for me if I lead her astray? So if I'm leading her towards things that, you know, only I want to do in this life, which is my own will and not Yah's will, the most highest will, then, you know, that'll ultimately be me leading her astray um, to things that, you know, I idolize or things that I want instead of what the most high wants, you know. So that's just a that's just one thing that I was thinking about um, of how how much what death of self actually is. It's really just giving up yourself for the most high, allowing the most high to um, dwell in you. So that way you can carry out what he needs you and wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think like with that, um, even with like the goals and that's why it's important, like, you know, in marriage for the wife to help, because like I was telling him, you know, of course he put me on a bigger priority than his own goals but I think for my responsibility is still like push him towards what he you know dreamed of doing before and helping him achieve you know different things because two is better than one if I if he had this goal that he wants to achieve and I'm here now you know he's putting me as a priority but I think I well I know I should be putting him as a priority as well so his you know what he wants help with I'm here to help with any area so right. yeah, and do you guys, uh, you guys want children, obviously. Right? Yes. Do you guys have like a timeline of when you guys want to? We said about a year and a half to two years, but recent, like I don't know, recently, I just got it to where whenever the Most High says so, you know, it'll happen. We're still taking precautions to make sure <laughs> that we're not <laughs> that we're not just being reckless, right. you know. But um, you know, just whenever the Most High has and plan for in store for us yeah. to have children then we will we will have them and i do want a lot of children so yeah that's gonna be over the course of a, a little while that's good you guys got married young right <laughs> right so yes yeah, you can yeah that's amazing yeah and then in the times that we're living into it's i think i think it's really important that we do i saw some comments of like i hope 
uh, some comment towards me and my husband was, I hope you guys have lots of babies so you guys can help try to balance out the world right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Whoo, let's see how many my body can take. <laughs> but, um, so I really, uh, I, I am proud of you guys. I, this is my first time meeting you guys, but I am proud of you guys Thank for getting you. married Thank young. You. I think that it's important to the youth and the young people watching to see a young couple, you guys are so wise, you guys are so mature, your foundation's on God. I saw another comment where someone says, I know this is a woman of God. I said, no, for real, because right. how else am I getting this knowledge? How else would I be able to transform it? Transform? I, I don't think I could without God. So mm-hmm. when you have that as your foundation and stuff, nothing is impossible. And I actually, controversial, but you guys are doing it right. Because typically back in the times, they got married very young, right? right? Mm-hmm. You know, you have women going through puberty at such a young age and, and, and men going through puberty at such a young age and we think oh that's really young but they were getting married back in 16 17 we just live in a society now where we're our frontal lobe doesn't develop till 25 and we're moving much slower at life even with all these all this technology all these advances we're we're still maturing so much later and so you guys are actually doing it right and since she's young you guys have lots of babies (laughs) too (laughs) which was the goal back then too so i appreciate you guys any last comments before i do my little outro Thank you. This was oh, great. Thank you so yeah. much. Mm-hmm. I this appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. You guys are great. You're definitely a glowing, <laughs> glowing <laughs> Christian you. woman, glowing <laughs> Christian man. I love to see you guys. Get, you guys are just radiating the Holy Spirit. So I love yeah. that. Um, so just to end off with my outro, I have two ebooks right now, How to Magnify the King Your Husband. So if you are struggling in your marriage or you are struggling as a wife, uh, that book is there to help guide wives to be able to help uplift their husbands and go through hard seasons and then the second book is i'm the price at who which is just my ebook about just the feminism and what it's done to um really develop pride and ego within women and to be a wife you have to be very very humble and as you guys seen the representation today with this young lady is that she's talked about multiple times helping her husband and so you really have to find ways to help your spouse and you have to really break free from um, pride and ego so you can be one with your partner so yeah those are my two ebooks i also do coaching um i've been counseling coaching for the last two months it's been really really fun so if you guys want to have one-on-ones with me and we have deeper discussions and if you guys have any Anything you guys are doing or want to promote before we wrap it up here? Um, well, I started like a few a month ago. Um, a woman's community called Chosen by Him. It's basically a community where women come together. Um, it's biblically based, and we talk about how to grow in our relationship with the Most High, how to grow as women according to the Bible, and wives. If you're a wife already, or if you want to be a wife, we discuss all of that and you know, go over so many different things on Zoom. So I started that and it's been really good. I have a lot of women that already are in there and, you know, it's good for me as well because as I'm helping them, they're helping me, mm, you know, that's amazing. seek the most high for his, more of his wisdom. So it's helping me as I'm helping them. So that's what I started and I'm loving it so far. That's amazing. And with me, like I said earlier, um, I work with exotic cars, so I might have some uh, car content. Also, I'm planning on starting something to where I'm talking about the most high, especially for young men my age, because I see the misdirection um, from the young men of this this age and time with the music, with, you know, pornography or anything like that. Um, Lack of direction, lack of men being in the homes and a lot of things I've experienced growing up um, as far as what I partook in as sin, like the pornography, the lustful mindset, um, fornication, all those things. So I just want to create something to speak on that. So I'll probably be doing that soon um, just to help people my age or even older, younger, um, to be more motivated to please the most high and live for them. So. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you guys for everything that you're doing. And thank you for being an example to the youth as well right now. So God bless you guys. And that wraps up today's episode. <laughs> if you guys want to experience one-on-one coaching with me where I 
really help people who do struggle with BPD, do struggle with femininity, and do have relationship issues, you guys can click the link in my bio and my YouTube or on my Instagram bio to my pillar link and you guys will find one-on-one -on -one sessions. I also have ebooks such as How to Magnify the King and Your Husband and I'm the Prize Said Who, which are both self-reflection ebooks that have really saved and helped marriages. So check those out and click this episode right here to watch more.